And here we are having breakfast with Coco Bananas. I'm having a toad in the hole. And she likes to eat the yolk of my breakfast. So this is our morning ritual. She gets a little protein. And I get a moment with my weasel. And this is at this is at 6.30 in the morning before my 8 o'clock geometry class. Before my 8 o'clock geometry class where I see all the best students, I have a weasel eating my breakfast. And then she goes and eats her own breakfast. Her own breakfast is over there. She likes to eat my breakfast. She likes to get on the floor and eat my breakfast. Yes. Oh. This is a homemade bread that my wife made last night. Nice and thick. It's a seed bread. There's like three different kinds of seeds inside. A little cheddar cheese on top. So when we uh, get down to business here, here's what we're going to be doing. We find the volume of a butternut squash. We're going to find the volume of this kind of thing. So you can see it's a, a solid of revolution. You know, it's the same all the way around. It's as if you took a curve shaped like, you know, part of the silhouette, you know, this way. And spun it around and made the solid. So that's the thing we'll be finding the volume of first. And there's another one, too. We're going to do two problems this morning. As soon as we get done with breakfast. All right, continuing along. Check it out. Check it out. You got a nice curve here. There's the equation. You can graph this on your calculator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not exactly a butternut squash. You know, sue me. I'm trying to get, you know, this kind of shape, but I've got it flat on one end and flat on the other end. But I've got the little bumpy shape and a little bell at the end. You know, it's, it's not bad, right? And it's only a, a cubic polynomial. So the the uh, math might not be too bad, but it could be bad. Oh, the big yawn. Well, I need my hands. Yeah. All right. You're on your own. Well, 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 well. So we're going to rotate this around the x-axis because that's, uh, that's the main idea here. Get this shape so you can draw like a little ghostly reflection of it. And then the cross section and the radius going right up to the original curve. The usual. We've done this before. It's not too bad. I think that you guys could actually draw that freehand. What do you think, Matt? Can you do this? Darian, can you do that? I think you could do that. All right, so the setup, it's going to be pi integral from 1 to 4, obviously. And it's going to be r squared. And the r is this y, because you're starting at the x-axis going straight up. And y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 3 quantity squared dx. Well, boy, it would be nice if we had chain rule, but I don't have the derivative of the inside anywhere. we got to square this out. So that's like multiplying this polynomial times itself. So, you know, would I do this to you? Well, I don't know. You should be able to multiply stuff. At 6 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to write it out and make sure that I get everything. So the first thing times all of them. So I have x to the 6th minus 6x to the 5th plus 11x to the 4th minus 3x cubed. Next thing is going to be this minus 6x squared times everybody. So it's minus 6x to the 5th plus 36x to the 4th. You see how I'm lining these things up? So when I go to add, I can just add straight down. Minus 66x to the 3rd. And then plus 18x squared. Next up, it's the 11x times everybody. 
So 11x to the third minus 66x cubed. Whoop, whoop. Well, this is x to the fourth. x to the fourth. 11x to the fourth because it's 11x times x cubed. 11x to the fourth minus 66x cubed plus 121x squared minus 33x. And one more. Minus 3 times everybody. Minus 3x cubed. Plus 18x squared. Minus 33x. Plus 9. So, I'm going to fit all this in up here. I'm going to make the space. I'm going to erase my multiplication piece. I'm going to write what we have to take the integral of. So we've got x to the sixth. I've got minus 12 x to the fifth. I've got 58 x to the fourth. I've got 138 minus 138 x to the third. I've got 139 plus 18 7 5 157 x squared minus 66 x plus 9 dx. Ta-da! Okay. Let's pretend I did all those right. <laughs> From 1 to 4 pi. So now just antiderivative all the way across. So I end up with x to the 7th over 7 minus, now that's going to be 12 divided by 6, so I'm just going to make it 2x to the 6th. 58 over 5. to the fifth minus 138 over 4 let's see 4 goes into 138 that's going to go 3 7 minus 37 x to the fourth 157 over 3 157 is not a multiple of 3 x to the third minus 66 divided by 2 is minus 33 x squared plus 9x evaluated from 1 to 4. And don't forget that pi out front. Let's see, do we got that all on the on the camera there? Yeah, just about. Let's just give it a little bit of a tunk off to the side. A little bit more. Come on, you cooperate with me. There we go. Good. All right, so the last part is just the evaluation. So I did it on my calculator. These numbers are brutal. Uh, so putting in the four, I got this 13,000 number. Putting in the one, putting in the one is nice because all these x's becomes ones. It's just one seventh minus two plus 58 over five, et cetera, all the way down. You just use the coefficients. So final answer, pi times one, three, Four, five, four, point, let's call it six, six. So it's the volume of this particular revolution solid, sort of like a uh, butternut squash with the ends cut flat. Next up, check this out. I've got a dish here. It's got a little spike in the middle. It's for making uh, baked apples. You take a apple and you stick it on there, take out the core, stick it up, uh, wrap it in pastry, maybe throw some cinnamon and brown sugar in there. And you get to make a baked apple. So the little spike in the middle, you can see the spike in the middle is um, triangular in cross-section. We're going to find the volume of this kind of shape. Now notice the sides aren't straight up. There's a little slant to the sides. 
And then, you know, that middle thing is a nice triangle. So let's see what we can do. All right, so next up, goal is to find the volume of this funny old dish, this, this, bake, this apple baking dish. And I've got some curves here. This y equals 0, x equals 0 means we're going to be cut off by the uh, first quadrant. And then I've got a parabola. And the parabola is placed that there's a little peak in the middle on the y-axis for where this thing gets spun around. And I've got, for the outer boundary, this nice slanted line that hits the parabola. Let me show you. So you can graph it on your calculator and get the shape. So the one on the board is pretty accurate. We do need to know the coordinates for this point because that's where our pieces are going to go. Now, there's only one way to do this thing, and that would be to do, uh, well, there's two ways. You can do shells or washers, and it's going to be tricky because you have this funny little slant to it. When you go to do, <clears throat> let's say we go to do shells, your shells are going to have that height for a large part of its existence but then starting over here the shells have their height on two different curves let's do shells i like doing shells with this because it challenges us so let's uh let's get rid of this graffiti thanks a lot i don't want to name names who drew this on the board But, uh, it could have been it could have been any one of a dozen students in the room. All right, so let's see what we got here. When you rotate it around, you're going to have that baked that apple baking thing shape, and you're going to have shells that do this kind of thing. So there's one shell. We need to find this point. It's where that slanted line hits the x-axis, and you can tell right away that's at x equals two. X equals two gives me ten minus ten. So it's at x equals 2. Now we'd like to know where these two things intersect. And if you do the 5x minus 10 equals x squared minus 2x plus 2, you'll actually get two points of intersection, but only one of them fits the picture. We care about that first point of intersection. And uh, subtracting this, the 5x, x squared minus 7x, adding the 10 plus 12. So you've got to use a 4 and a 3. And they're both negative, x minus 4, x minus 3. The 3 is the one that fits because it's the first time that these intersect. So this parabola comes around curvy, and that line cuts through it twice. It also cuts through it at x equals 4. But if you look at the side of the baking dish, it isn't like the two curvy things intersect each other. You know, they, they, the, the flat side hits the curvy side, and it stops. So we got to use this x equals 3 spot. So when x equals 3, I have 15 minus 10 equals 5, or I have 9 minus 8 plus 2, that's 5. So this is at 5 on the y-axis. Now let's set up our integrals. We'll be doing two shell integrals. We're going to do the integral 2 pi rh dx from 0 to 2. That's the family of shells that ride out from the middle to here. And then we're going to do 2 pi rh, still dx, of course, but they're going to ride from 2 to 3 because they're the shells that have a slanted line for the bottom edge of the shell. You're going to know what to do because you're smart. Here we go. 2 pi. 0 to 2, the radius goes just regular old x. And the height is the curve. So that's the x squared minus 2x plus 2 dx. That's doable. That's a doable integral. You're going to multiply through by x. You don't have the chain rule. And then this other one, plus 2 pi, integral 0 to 2, zero, sorry, 2 to 3. 2 to 3, the radius is still x, because look at, for these outer shells here, the radius goes from the y-axis out to, you know, this far. This is still an x distance for that shell. And notice we are under control. The radius goes from 2 to 3. So the radius comes out this far and hits this line, and 
So 2 to 3 is good. The radius is still x. But the height is the top curve minus bottom curve. That's the part where you got to be smart. Top curve minus bottom curve. So it's x squared minus 2x plus 2 minus the 5x minus 10. So check it out. I'm distributing the minus sign in my in my head and writing down 5x plus 10 because it's minus 5x minus 10, but it's it's minus the quantity 5x minus 10. So it's minus the 5x plus the 10. So these are our two integrals. We're almost done. Now the stuff left to do is multiply it out, then uh, simplify, integrate, put in the, uh, the limits of integration, and we're done. So from here, it's just mechanical. I'm going to finish up because you want to know how the story ends. But from here on out, it's, it's stuff you can do without having to think hard. All right, finishing it up. What a morning we're having here. Hope you're having fun, uh, uh, Mitchell and, and Luis and uh, Noah. Hey, Noah, in the back. Hi, Laura. So distributed that x, combined like terms, getting ready to integrate. Getting ready to integrate. Whoops, I need a closing parenthesis right there. So, um, everybody's going to go up by one part. These are just polynomials. Nothing too bad. So, from here to here. So, it's just working upward. There's your integration. There's your integration. And then I put in the uh, numbers myself and calculated through. You can do it yourself if you want to. But I got out a solid 110 pi over 12. So, it's not a gigantic volume, but it's not a very big thing. The sides are pretty thin. So remember, we're finding not the space inside. We're finding what the material, the volume of the material that this pot is made of. Well, there you go, guys. You had breakfast with the weasel, and you got to have two math problems. Have a great day.